Whether you have an Aura Ring, a Whoop, or a Polar H10 chest strap, I want to show you how to max out your HRV. I'm going to show you five ways that you can increase your HRV, your heart rate variability fast. Heart rate variability is becoming all the rage and I bet you want to know how to increase your numbers. I battle tested many of these strategies with myself and with hundreds of my customers. So know that what I'm about to share with you really works and that the time that you're going to be dedicating to these strategies are going to be really effective and are going to move the needle for you. So let's get into it right now. When we're talking about optimizing HRV, most of the time people are talking about a time domain measurement which is a specific type of HRV measurement and the type within the time domain umbrella that we're talking about is called the RMSSD and the RMSSD is a good indication of your overall recovery and this is the heart rate variability metric that most wearables that we know and use and everyone is tracking uh, is calculating this RMSSD heart rate variability number. If you want to learn more about the different types of heart rate variability, then I encourage you to go check out the other really in-depth video that I did breaking down everything that you need to know about understanding heart rate variability because it is a very complex subject that I did my best to compress into about a 20 minute video. So if you want to nerd out, you really want to understand the science of the nervous system and how these measurements are being quantified and when they're applicable and when they're not applicable, then go check that out after you're done with this video. I will also link it up in the description as well. So something to know about this specific type of HRV measurement, the RMSSD, is it's a good indication of your recovery because it cannot be manipulated by your breath like other forms of HRV measurements. And because most of these devices are recording this calculation throughout the night, that can also attribute to the accuracy of the data. So it's a good indication of your recovery because movement can affect your heart rate variability, right? And so when you're lying down, you're asleep, it's taking that data and it's collecting it over a long period of time. So it's a, it's a fairly good measurement of how well your body is actually recovering. So some of the reasons why your HRV might be low, and this isn't a, a comprehensive list, this is just some of the main things that I see with people, is number one, stress. Whether it's mental, emotional, physical, environmental, chemical, financial, whatever it is, however you're experiencing stress in your life, that is going to be affecting your nervous system. And thus we're gonna see a decline in scores. Another reason is you could just not be sleeping well. You could have bad sleep habits, bad sleep hygiene. You don't have a good routine. And a lot of that measurement is being calculated through your sleeping process. And thus, uh, if you're not good at getting good sleep, then your HRV is going to suffer. And that's when most of your recovery is going to be taking place. So your body is doing the bulk of its recovery during the deep sleep cycle that takes place in the first trimester, majority of the first trimester of the uh, sleep stages. And then towards the latter end of the night or early morning is when your REM sleep is going to be taking place, the bulk of your REM sleep, and that's where your mind is recovering. So your body is recovering during deep sleep, your mind is recovering during REM sleep, and thus your HRV scores are going to be impacted if you're not sleeping well. Another reason why your HRV scores might be low is you might not be giving yourself enough time to recover in between workouts. So if you're pushing yourself too hard in the gym, you're going above your capacity, then your HRV might start to decline, you know, because you're putting a lot of stress on the nervous system. You're expending a lot of energy and you're taxing your system and your system needs time to recover. And this next one is sort of tied into the first one and often goes overlooked or, or undetected, which is you might be dealing with some unresolved trauma. So if there's something that's happened in your childhood or in your past or even recently that has really affected your mental health or uh, has basically created stress within the nervous system in your body, uh, then you know you might have a hard time really recovering. You might have a hard time getting out of fight or flight, right? And so uh, if you're dealing with that, I highly suggest you go seek a mental health professional, someone who's uh, trained in the art of, of, of resolving trauma and helping you navigate and work through that in a way that's safe. That is very, very important. And I will link up some resources below to uh, some people who I would recommend if you're dealing with that. And then the next thing is basics. You know, are, are you dehydrated? Do you have poor nutrition? You know, if you're not drinking enough water, not getting enough electrolytes, which is a whole whole another subject that I'll make a video about at, uh, at some point. But uh, if you're not properly hydrated, and you're not eating the correct food, you're not, you're not getting the nutrition that your body needs, especially if you're working out and you're pushing yourself hard and you're not fueling yourself appropriately, then your body is going to be 
struggling. And that could possibly contribute to these lower scores. These are some of the things to look at immediately when you're evaluating your scores and you're thinking, okay, what could potentially be causing this? And once you start to peek under the hood, I'm sure you're gonna to start to find some answers. So now let's get into the actual strategies, the tactics that you can apply right now. And if you are liking this content, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help get this information, this content out to more people. And let me know in the comments, what are you struggling with with your HRV? What have you tried? What is working for you? What's not working for you? Please let me know in the comments. I would love to start a discussion around this topic and hear from you. So the first thing that you can do to start increasing those scores really, really fast, and this is something that I've isolated as, as a variable, and I can now like really confidently say this will increase your HRV if you do it for a long enough period of time, you do it consistently, which is something called prehabbing, okay? The Prehab Dojo is a company that my friend Skip Kelly started, and the way that I like to think about it, the way that I like to explain it, is think of it as meditation for your muscles. It's a system of exercise that's designed to strengthen your nervous system. What it is, is these gentle isometric contractions where we are working on the mind-muscle connection, right? So think about this, your nervous system is uh, attached to your brain, right? So you have your brain and then your nervous system comes through your spinal cord, that's the central nervous system, and those nerves go out to every single muscle in your body, right? And so this practice is really about, uh, you have a thought, okay, let me wiggle my big toe, or let me flex my right calf. And it's creating that, that image, creating that thought, sending that signal down to that muscle, and individually isolating that contraction. And what you're doing is you're taking that contraction to about a six out of 10 intensity, right? So you can start to fatigue it. Once it gets to that fatigue, you wanna start ratcheting that level of intensity down to about a three, then a two, then a one, then as, as low intensity as possible. And what this does is it is producing this chemical called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is essentially a miracle grow for the brain. It's going to help create more neurons. It is going to be the catalyst for neurogenesis, growing new nerve cells, literally growing new nerve cells. And, and so what this does is it's taking the signal from your brain, this is an electrical signal that, that's coming through and it's passing through your nervous system, sending that signal to contract that muscle and it's, it is strengthening that neural pathway, right? And it, the way that you do it, it's so relaxing because this BDNF chemical is a precursor to all the happy chemicals, right? Serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, all these things that we want. And so when we do this, it's releasing this flood of chemicals, right? That sponsors all this growth in our brain and in our nervous system, but also puts us in this relaxed Zen-like state. So if you've ever tried meditation, but maybe you've struggled with it, it's kind of like meditation, except you don't have to empty your mind. You're just very, very focused. And so it brings you into the present moment and it's a way to connect with your muscles and it's actually gonna make your workouts a lot better, but what it's doing is it's strengthening that nervous system and I've seen my scores, the RMSSD scores, not the SDNN or not the frequency domain measurements, but the RMSSD score, the recovery score, I've seen my scores go up 20 to 30 points after only a day of 45 minutes of prehabbing. So on your off day of working out, you do a 45 minute prehabbing session and you should see your number, numbers increase. But with that caveat, I wanna mention that this is not a one, one and done, this is a forever practice. This is something you do every day. It's like brushing your teeth, right? We're strengthening those neurological connections, we're producing that BDNF, and we are doing this as a practice, right? So it's a daily ritual, okay? I will link up down below the resources so you can go check it out, download some tracks, experience it for yourself. It's guided meditations that are gonna walk you through the practice, right? And there's videos that go along with it. There's free resources and there's paid resources. You pick your level wherever you wanna go in. Go check that out. I will link up more videos that I've done, an interview with Skip about how he healed his broken back. Also, my explanation of everything dojo related that you can nerd out on if you wanna go into that, and also, a foot mechanic video, how to uh, walk, right? I will link everything up in the description. It's all up in the cards as well. So 
go check that out after you're done with this video. But prehabbing is absolutely something that's changed my life and has allowed me to recover from an injury, recover from you know dealing with some mental health stuff. It just it put me in such a better place, and so I'm very passionate about it, and I want to share it with you. Let's get into number two. Number two is going to be sleep optimization. Okay, I've talked at length about sleep optimization on this channel. So there's tons of videos that you can go check out after you watch this one. And I've also put together a full blown course on how to optimize your sleep, reset your sleep in seven days, completely transform your relationship with sleep so that you can sleep like a God. You can just recover so fast because look, if you're not sleeping, if you can't go to bed and wake up at the same time, you know, good luck trying to do anything great in this world, okay? The basics of sleep optimization are dialing in your circadian rhythm. So being in a rhythm throughout the day, going to bed with the sun, waking up with the sun, having meals at the same designated time, making sure your light exposure is, you know, you're seeing the sun in the morning, you're seeing the sun as it goes down, right? Blocking blue light with your blue light blocking glasses, you know, taking some magnesium, a high quality magnesium, because not all magnesiums are created equal. And I made a video about the best magnesium to take, which I will link up here and down in the description. Go check it out afterwards. There's so much content on this channel. I could, I could talk at length about it. So just reference any of the resources that I've mentioned or have pointed you to, to, to learn about how to get really, really great sleep. Okay. And before we go on to the next step to, to help increase your HRV, I want to tell you about a little story about my friend, uh, Katie type a. So Katie got my course, the sleep advantage, and she started applying all the things that I teach inside of the, inside of the course. And within a matter of weeks, she tripled her HRV tripled. So she was like in the twenties and she got all the way up to the sixties, something like that very, very quickly, only in a matter of few weeks. So this stuff, really, really works. And sleep optimization is a huge pillar when it comes to thinking about your HRV, your heart rate variability, your recovery. All right. The next thing that I discovered about things that really move the needle in terms of increasing your HRV is something that I actually didn't expect. So it's meditation, right? But it's not just any meditation. Meditation will increase your HRV, just normal meditation will. But I have been doing Joe Dispenza's meditation for about six months now. And what I've learned about HRV is that it is insanely impacted by emotions. Okay. So how we feel on a day to day basis and the emotions that we uh, experience in our body and in our sphere of, of reality is really, really going to influence our nervous system. And so doing Joe Dispenza's meditation, there is a practice an emotional fitness that you are building around feeling certain emotions like gratitude, like love, like freedom, like abundance. And this might sound a little woo woo, but I have measured this. I have quantified it with my polar H 10 chest strap. And that is the most accurate, uh, consumer facing sort of HRV measurement that I would recommend because, uh, it gives you all these different types of measurements, including frequency domain measurements, including the SDNN and total power and all these different things that if you're a nerd like me, then you like to know, but, but I saw when I was doing, uh, Joe Dispenza's meditations that my, uh, amplitude on my heart rate variability was crazy. And I have, tested it against normal meditation. What I've discovered is it really is the emotions. It really is the emotions that you're feeling. And when you're feeling love and bliss and abundance and freedom and gratitude and peace and all the above, it's like your nervous system just goes whoop, and it's just like, okay, we're locked in. And so, you know, I have no affiliation with Joe Dispenza. Great dude though. Go check him out. I highly encourage you buy some of his meditations and just give it a try. You'll be surprised how this will impact your HRV. It will increase dramatically, I hope. So go check that out and let me know how it goes. The next thing that you can do to increase your HRV that's really easy, super good for you, and everyone should just be doing more of it is walking. Okay. So walking is the best form of active recovery, right? You are literally just getting your system to do what it was born to do which is to move, right? And so if you're struggling with your HRV, I highly encourage you to go for a walk first thing in the morning, not only because it will be good for your blood sugar, but it will also be good for your circadian rhythm, but then also it's going to help your HRV, right? Then I would go for a walk after lunch and then I'd go for a walk after dinner. 
this is going, I mean, if there's one habit that, that everyone could sort of put into place that could completely transform their health and expand their lifespan and extend their, their lifespan and their, and their health span, it would be just little daily walks. It doesn't have to be long. I suggest 20 minutes in the morning so you can stimulate that chemical in your body called ghrelin, which is going to uh, make you ready to eat. It's gonna help you digest your food better. But it's also gonna stabilize your blood sugar. It's gonna bring your blood sugar down in the morning, which is gonna set the tone for the rest of the day. And the same thing is if you do it after a meal, it's gonna bring your blood sugar down. And if you do it after dinner, it's gonna help with your circadian rhythm because you're gonna be getting that exposure to the sunlight as you're walking. So all in all, walking is, uh, for me, it's a spiritual path because the word spirit uh, in Latin is a uh, spira, which means to breathe. And so what I've discovered is that when you walk, you change your breathing. And I found that anytime that I have a, a big problem to solve, or there's something in my life that's really taking up a lot of mind share, I always find that going for a long walk is amazingly helpful and, and, and things just start to sort themselves out. And I don't know where I read this, but Somewhere along the line, I picked up a book that, that talked about how Steve Jobs and one of his best friends or one of his business partners would always go for really, really long walks. And ever since then, I started walking like crazy. And there's something really special about it. And if you know what I'm talking about, please let me know in the comments because uh, it's a beautiful practice to, to have those walks. That way of, of living is, is something really, really nice. And most of the Western world is living a very sedentary life. And as you know, lockdown and more screens, more time on social media, all these things, uh, I found it more important than ever to, to get outside and go for walks. So do that. It will transform your life, I guarantee you, and it will help extend your life. I promise. Combine this with the last one, the walking one, is uh, grounding. So there's been some studies that I will link up in the description. I'll put right here too about uh, the impact of grounding on infants and their HRV and vagal tone. If you check out the study, you'll see that there is a, a noticeable uptick in HRV. And I've noticed personally that when I spend lots of time with my bare feet, in the ground, whether I'm going for a walk or not, I could just go to the beach or I could put my feet in the dirt or whatever, uh, I do notice that not only does it calm me, right? It makes me more calm, but also it, there's been scientific studies that show uh, the impact that it ha can have on inflammation and blood sugar and the thyroid and a whole bunch of other things. This is something that everyone I think needs more of in their life, which is just nature. And so I, I believe that the more we move in the direction of, of being in harmony with nature, the healthier we will be and, and the longer we will live. So let me know if you agree with that, but definitely, Go for a grounded walk, you know, go to the beach if you live by the water and stick your feet in the sand, go meditate, do your thing. Do you, what about this? You go for a walk on the beach, grounded walk on the beach, and then you find a nice spot, sit down, do your Joe Dispenza meditation. Boom, you just hit three birds with one stone and you're gonna sleep better. And then you come home, you prehab, boom. You just knocked all that stuff out. It doesn't even have to take that long. So start implementing these things now. Let me know how it goes. And I would be super curious if you have any suggestions or things that have really moved the needle for you in terms of your heart rate variability, put them in the comments below. And if you, you like this type of content, consider subscribing if you're not already. And I know that you'll like any of the other videos on my channel, so go check them out. Maybe I'll put one here when it's done. See you in the next one. Take care, be well.